All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Piety is not in turning your faces towards the east or the west. Rather, the pious are those who believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets, who give charity out of their cherished wolf to relatives, orphans, the poor, the needy travelers, the beggars, and for freeing captives, who establish prayer, pay alms tax, and keep pledges they make, and who are patient in times of suffering, adversity, and in the heat of battle. It is they who are true in faith, and it is they who are mindful of Allah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Ramadan is the month of obedience and blessing. It is the month of observing fasts, night prayers, kinship, cordiality, and cooperation for righteousness and piety. It is a month in which Muslim examines the truthfulness of his patience and fearing Allah. As he fasts, bears hunger and thirsts, controls his whims, be patient to any harm, as well as he also approaches Allah through various acts of worship, such as reciting the Quran, mentioning the name of Allah, performing night prayers, giving charity, making reconciliation between people, and doing all best for the welfare of people. There are good deeds that bring mercy of Allah. As Allah says, indeed, Allah's mercy is always close to the good doer. And the Prophet also said, this goodness contains many treasures, and for those there, there are keys. So glad tidings shall be to the one whom Allah makes a key to good and a lock to evil. And woe shall be to the one whom Allah makes a key to evil and a lock to good. Ramadan is a month of competition in the cause of goodness and righteousness solely for the sake of pleasing the Almighty Allah. This was the conduct of the Prophet peace be upon him in Ramadan. As Ibn Abbas narrated that Prophet peace be upon him was the most generous of all people. And he used to become more generous in Ramadan when Jibril visited him every night and recited the Quran to him. During this period, the generosity of the Prophet was faster than the rain bearing wind. <laughs> Ramadan is a vast field for righteousness, especially in terms of feeding the needy, which is one of the characteristics of the holy month and a characteristic of our religion. Abdullah ibn Salam narrated that when the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came to al Madinah, the people rushed towards him and it was said, the messenger of Allah has come. I came along with people to see him. And when I looked at the face of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I realized that his face was not the face of a liar. The first thing he said was, O oh people, spread greetings, offer food to people, have good ties with your relatives, and pray at night when people are sleeping. You will enter paradise in peace. The hadith included four qualities three of which are regarding relations between people, feeding the needy, promotion of peace, and having good ties with one's kinship. While the fourth is relating to relationship between a servant and the Almighty Allah, which is praying at night while people are asleep. Also, a man asks the Prophet, peace be upon him, which Islamic traits are the best? The Prophet said, to feed the poor and greet those whom you know and those whom you don't know. <clears throat> Man should not belittle any good deed, for he knows not which act shall be accepted by the Almighty Allah. The Prophet peace be upon him said, don't scorn any good act, even giving a lace of shoes in charity pouring water from your bucket into the bucket of someone else who asks for water, removing harms from the roots, meeting with your Muslim brother with a cheerful face, or greeting your brother when you meet him, or support the fearful man. 
If a man blames you for something he knows about you, do not blame him for anything you know about him. Leave him to his own evil. You will have your reward. If you hear something pleasant, listen to it. If you hear something unpleasant, don't listen to it. The Prophet also said, Every Muslim has to give charity. People asked, O oh Allah the Prophet, if someone has nothing to give, what would he do? He said he should work with his hands and benefit himself and also give in charity from what he earns. The people further asked if he cannot even find that. He replied he should help the needy who appeal for help. Then people asked if he cannot do that. He replied then he should perform good deeds and keep away from evil deeds and this will be regarded as charitable deeds. <coughs> However, we affirm that piety is a comprehensive term that covers all traits of goodness and all acts meant to please Allah and benefit people. Therefore, the Prophet peace be upon him said, piety is good manner. Also, Faithfulness and recognition of others' virtues are among the traits of noble people. As the poet said, Faithfulness is a duty for the noble one, while the inferior people are unfaithful. A noble man is fair with those who he deals with, but the inferior person is always unfair. One of the greatest manifestations of piety is goodness to one's kinship and being dutiful to one's neighbors and all people. This is the best way to foster harmony and solidarity, promote the values of compassion among all people. In Ramadan, there is no room for hatred, for hatred or quarrels. If Ramadan is the month of good relations, then this good relation is manifested in two acts having good ties with one's kinship as the Prophet peace be upon him said in the Qudsi hadith that Allah the Almighty says I am merciful Ar-Rahman I have created ties of kinship Rahim and derived a name for it from my name if anyone man maintains ties of kinship I maintain connection with him and I shall cut off anyone who cuts them off. Then the Prophet said, Read in the Quran if you wish the statement of Allah. Now, if you hypocrites turn away, perhaps you would then spread corruption throughout the land and sever your ties of kinship. <clears throat> also, the Prophet said, The works of the servants of Allah are presented to Allah on Monday and Thursday. On those two days, Allah forgives every Muslim except two who have forsaken each other. He says, leave these two until they reconcile. <clears throat> the Prophet peace be upon him stated that strengthening the ties of kinship are one of the pillars of faith to which he called since the very inception of his mission. Amr ibn Absa said, I entered into the Prophet peace be upon him in the very beginning of his mission and said to him, Who are you? He replied, I am a Prophet of Allah. I said again, Who is a Prophet? He said, I am a Prophet in the sense that I have been sent by Allah. I said, What is that which you have been sent with? He said, I've been sent to join ties of relationship <coughs> with kindness and affection to break the idols. He, peace be upon him, also made it as one of the signs of faith, saying, He who believes in Allah and the last day, let him maintain good relations with Ken. A fact which is proved by saying of Allah Most High and the possessors of relationships are nearer to each other in the ordinance of Allah. Surely Allah knows all things. <clears throat> the other aspect of maintaining good ties should be with other people around you. You should not sever ties with anybody. Prophet peace be upon him said, it is not lawful for a Muslim to desert, that is stop talking to, his brother beyond three nights. 
the one turning one way and the other turning to the other way when they meet. The better of the two is the one who is the first to greet the other. This does not mean that he should start with greeting him when meeting with him in the road, but rather he should maintain peaceful relations with him in the very sense of the word peace. It should be a genuine peace that is translated into reality. It should not be a mere saying of the tongue while the heart denies it. Rather, it should be maintained with one's own self, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, men, animals, inanimate objects, and everything in the universe. Allah Most High says, O oh, you who believe, enter into submission one and all and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Surely he is your open enemy. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped but Allah, and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is Vodari and Messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and upon, the, and upon those who follow them till the day of judgment. <clears throat> Muslim brothers, the wisdom of Allah has decreed the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan as an opportunity that should be seized by the benevolent people who want to do more good, de good days. It is an opportunity that should be seized by those whose good deeds are not enough because they are replete with infinite mercy of Allah. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Your Lord has destined some days wherein his infinite mercy showers his slaves, so exposed to them so that you may be showered with it, thus not be deprived forever. For this reason he, peace be upon him, used to exert more acts of worship in these last 10 days of Ramadan. One of the things we, that we should be keen on in these last 10 days is praying at night, which is from the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It is proved that Prophet, peace be upon him, used to offer more acts of worship in these days. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, with the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would pray all night and would keep his family awake for the prayers. He tied his lower garment, that he avoided sleeping with his wives, and devoted himself entirely to prayer and supplication. She also report, reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to sleep and offer prayer in the first 20 days of Ramadan. Yet, with the start of the last 10 days, he tied his lower garment and offered more acts of worship. Allah Most High has preferred these last 10 days with the greatest night ever, which is the night of decree, which is truly a sign of honor to the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mujahid, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, told the companions about a man from the children of Israel who carried the weapon for the sake of Allah for one thousand months. So the companions were astonished, which is why Allah sent down his verse his verses, surely we revealed it on the grand night. And what will make you comprehend what the grand night is? The grand night is better than a thousand months. The angels and Jibreel descend in it by the permission of their Lord for every affair. Peace, it is till the break of the morning. This means that offering acts of worship in this night is better than performing jihad in the cause of Allah, which is cause Allah for a thousand months. In the same vein, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, that he who offers acts of worship during the, that night will have his sins forgiven for him. 
Whosoever performs qiyam during Laylat al-Qadr or night of decree with faith and being hopeful of Allah's reward will have his former sins forgiven. So the Muslim should be keen on seizing this great night to get closer to Allah and to get his forgiveness. The Prophet peace be upon him urged us to see the night of decree in the odd days in the last 10 days of Ramadan due to the infinite divine good in that night. He peace be upon him said seek the night of decree in the odd nights of the last 10 days of Ramadan. In another narration it is said seek Laylat al-Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. When nine nights are remaining, that is, on the twenty-first day, when seven nights are remaining, that is, on the twenty-third day, and when five nights are remaining, that is, on the twenty-fifth day. One of the good deeds to be observed on these days is giving out sadaqat or al-fitr almsgiving which uh, which purifies the fasting person and is some kind of provision given to the poor and the needy Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him said the messenger of Allah peace be upon him enjoying zakat al-fitr on the one who fasts that is he who fasted during the month of Ramadan to purify him from any indecent act or speech and for the purpose of providing food, food for the needy, it is accepted as a care for the person who pays it before Eid al-Fitr. And it is sadaqah, that's voluntary charity, for the person who pays it after Eid prayer. Furthermore, one of the best good deeds to be offered in these last 10 days is supplication, since it is more desirable to be answered. The mother of the believers, Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, said, I asked, O Messenger of Allah, if I realize Laylat al-Qadr, what should I supplicate in it? He, peace be upon him, said, You should supplicate, O Allah, you are most forgiving, and your, you love forgiveness, so forgive me. So we should be keen on seizing these good days and the night of decree in particular through offering more the supplication and recitation of the Quran as well as any other good deeds that make us get closer to Allah so that we won't be deprived. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said this month has, has come to you and in it there is a night that's better than a thousand months Whoever is deprived of it is deprived of all goodness and no one is deprived of its goodness except one who is truly deprived.